Hey and welcome to another tutorial today I will show you how to create this cool looking facetune icon inside Microsoft PowerPoint. So the left one is an image, the right one is the creation done in Microsoft PowerPoint. So let's get started. I will start in a blank presentation. I already have this logo in here so I will select it and select format, color drop down menu and select this gray preset just so everything is a little bit faded. Maybe this time I will make an exception and I will select this second gray preset which is a little bit darker but still faded just so I can see what I'm drawing. I will zoom in like this and I will start with the outer part of the slider and that seems like to be like an arc so I will insert a new shape and I will select the shape named block arc and I will draw it like this using my shift key on my keyboard just so it's a circle and before I do anything else I will make sure it's almost like a full circle so it will be easier for me to set the right size. For the fill I will open the more fill colors and increase the transparency a little bit just so I can see what's below. Then the next steps is a combination of me pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard to you know move it to the right spot and of course dragging this resize handle to make sure that the size is right. Seems like the outer size is right so I can adjust the yellow handle to kind of match the inner size and of course the left to set the starting point like this. And just by, judging by the image you can see that it's actually not a true arc because it's being overlaid by the head a little bit but we don't care we don't need to care about this right now because we will overlay the head anyway so i will zoom in and i want to take care of those endings which are kind of rounded i cannot just set the rounded edges so i have to insert a new shape being the oval which i will draw with my shift key being pressed so it's a circle instead i will also increase the transparency just so i can see what's below and maybe i can right click and select set as default shape which will cause that all the newly drawn shapes will have this uh, fill, semi-transparent fill. Okay, so I'll resize it, like kind of match the ending of the shape, like this. Then I can copy paste it or just drag it with my shift and control key being pressed and make sure that everything is aligned properly, like this. Okay, now I can select all three shapes, zoom out to make sure that everything is selected and select format merge shapes union which just which it will create just one shape out of those three which is great i will show the selection pane and actually hide this shape for now because i don't need to see it right now i will continue with the head and actually with the hair seems like it's done from a lot of different ovals or just rounded things but i will use ovals so insert shapes oval and the trick is to just you know somehow guess the right size or the position and size to match the curvature of the of the hairs or of the, of the gaps as well so something like this now maybe before i create like 10 different objects i can start by in you know merging those together so i will select the big one the small one and select merge shapes subtract then i can draw another oval in here like this maybe make it a little bit bigger and usually you know those gaps are made from smaller circles and the bigger parts are done from bigger circles but they're just a coincidence okay i will also select the big one the smaller one so merge shapes subtract now there is just like the bottom shape which is a circle as well but i need to subtract it from something and that something could be maybe like another circle i guess so i can insert another circle and just subtract this one so merge shapes subtract and i will continue on the right side so again, I need a, one big circle for this bigger part and small one, maybe just a tiny bit small for this part, maybe not that small. I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible so you can tell if I would have more time, I would spend more time just making sure that those shapes are matching, matching a little bit better than this. Okay, so we have this part which should be subtracted from something. We don't have anything, so I will again draw maybe a circle from which I will subtract this part. Okay, so it seems like we have all the parts in place, so I will select all of them and select Merge Shapes Union. And you can see that maybe in here it may not go outside of the head, so I will just, just to make sure I will draw another shape and just merge it, just to make sure that everything will be overlapping. And now we need a circle in the middle which we will intersect with this new shape. So I will draw a new circle and I will try to draw it in the size that it kind of matches the inner part of the head like this i'm pretty sure i would i would need this shape in the future and in a very near future so i'll just copy paste it maybe two more times and i will hide those two copies i will select this circle and i will create a big shape together and select merge shapes intersect 
so we have the hair we need the eye so i will insert a new circle holding my shift key on my keyboard i will hide everything and i will only show one of those copied circles and what i want to do now is to make sure that the size of the outline is the same as the image so i will right click and select format shape and for now i, I only need to care about the width so i will increase the width using the arrow key on my keyboard to make sure that i know the number because the next step would be to move everything to the right side it would be harder for me to guess the right size okay so it seems like it's ar around 22 points i will show everything zoom out and move all my shapes to the right side move the original logo to the left side select format reset picture so it will reset the colors now we can start adding some colors so for the outer part of the of the slider i will add a new gradient fill so i will select the fill to be a gradient fill and i want this to be going from the red so i will use the eye wrapper tool for the first gradient stop to blue so the second gradient stop will be blue like this one i don't need the other gradient stops and i need to change the direction to be zero degrees now you know it's not like it's it's a gradient following the path we are just drawing the path you know the gradient from the left to right side we may actually change this a little bit in the future but i guess we are fine for now i will set the line to no line and i will continue with the hair so i will set the line to no line it's actually not the hair i've, I've probably accidentally selected something else so i will open the selection pane and I, maybe i will show the objects one by one so this is the slider we already taken care of this those are the hairs so I will set the line to no line and fill should be gray. So I will use the eye wrapper tool to sample the gray color. And I will do the same for the eye, which is in here. So this is the eye, no line, and the fill should be gray. Then there is this oval with the blue, uh, sorry, with the very bold outline, which I will move below. And I will set for the outline, I will set the fill, or sorry, the eye outline to be gradient going from light gray to darker gray color. So no fill or the fill doesn't matter but the line should be gradient line going from light gray color so this one to a darker gray color which is this one i don't need those two gradient stops and i guess that the 90 degrees is fine for now so i will show the inner circle for which i don't need any line but i need the fill to be this gray one and as you can see i need to move this below like this this is the bold outline okay so this should be below everything okay so it seems like that we have the you know almost the same result the only thing which is missing is this kind of drop shadow effect below the head and we can do it in a few different ways actually it seems, seems to me that the fill for this one should be a little bit lighter okay this is the right one so how to make this drop shadow effect i can do it in a few different ways i can insert a new shape being the rectangle which I will make sure it's kind of same size as the head. I will rotate it by 45 degrees, move it to the right side, set the line to no line and gradient fill for the fill going from black to black. But the second black gradient stop should be 0%. If I move everything below, it will kind of resemble the effect at least a little bit. The difference is, you know, it's still a linear gradient, so it's kind of very visible on the sides but in here on this part you can see that the original picture has come some kind of shadow nothing is here but it's a quick way how to add a drop shadow effect like this there is another way how to do it which we will also try so if i hide this rectangle with the drop shadow i can just insert a new shape being the oval and i will draw it in the size of the head like this I will set the line to no line and fill to be black without any transparency and I will simply add the drop shadow effect so insert effects shadow preset being the outer drop shadow I will decrease the transparency and increase the blurriness to be quite big maybe like this the next step would be to show this rectangle one more time but maybe I will copy it one more time just so I can use this duplicate I will hide the original one and what I will do is I will use this image as a fill for this rectangle. So I will just copy this in the clipboard holding the control key on my keyboard. Then I will select this rectangle and for the fill I will select picture or texture fill. 
so picture or texture fill and I will select insert picture from clipboard you can see we have this you know copied picture which is resized because we have to click the tile picture as texture and I've already have those you know numbers in here but if you just uh, start with what you are doing you will have it more likely set to zero points for both x and y offset so you can see it's a little bit off so we have to adjust those I believe it was, it was like minus 70 and it was like minus 200 or so you can also use your arrow keys on the keyboard but since the increment is very small we will most likely start with some values and then fine-tune the position if I hide those other shapes you can see that what I've did is I've just used this you know blurred or uh, a circle with the drop shadow as a fill for the rectangle which caused that the drop shadow is actually being cut on the side so if I you know show everything you will see not this one you will see it kind of looks very similar to the original shape on the left side and I guess that's it that's how you create the facetune icon inside Microsoft PowerPoint in like 10 minutes or so thanks for watching